Hello and welcome to our analysis of ICAT 3. ICAT 3 was the final proctored mock in this season's mocks so far. It was also part of our All India National Level CAT Test Series for CAT 18. ICAT 3 essentially marks entry into the final lap of preparation with just two more mocks left for your practice. So by now you should be fairly sure of how you are going to attempt each section within a mock, what are your strengths and weaknesses within each section and what should be your optimal attempt strategy. Having said all of that, let's look at ICAT 3 in isolation and see how it was rated in terms of its difficulty and how it could have been attempted. So firstly, it was rated as a moderate to tough mock by our faculty with an average difficulty level of around 1.97. Now what does this 1.97 indicate? As we have explained in all our analysis earlier, if I assign a difficulty level from 1 to 3 to each question in the mock where 1 stands for easy and 3 stands for tough, the difficulty level for each question on an average was just below 2 at 1.97, so just below moderate. Just to give you a perspective, the average difficulty for CAT has been rated somewhere between 1.9 to 1.95. So in that sense, this was very similar to CAT, we can say marginally tougher than the CAT exam. Having looked at the overall section, the overall difficulty, Let's now look at each section. Because there are three sections, we will be presenting this analysis in three parts. So in the first part, we will have a look at the verbal ability section. Like the last few mocks, the verbal ability section of this particular mock was on the tougher side with an average difficulty of approximately 2.1. Again, to give you a perspective, in the exam, this has been rated at somewhere around 1.85. So, this was significantly tougher than the actual CAT. The reason because of which these last few mocks have had tough verbal is to give you an experience of a tough verbal section which we have not seen in CAT so far, but is a likelihood any time in the future. So it's not that we are expecting a tough verbal section this year, but you need to be prepared for that eventuality. It also prepares you for the situation that you can clear the cutoff with easier or uh, with fewer attempts and with the right selection of questions. So let's first look at the breakup of the verbal section. As always, it had 24 RC questions split over 5 RCs and 10 non-RC questions which was a combination of numerical entry or theta questions and para-summary questions. So because this is a very clearly distinguished section, let's first have a look at the RCs. The most standard breakup which was also followed in this particular mock was there were 3 RCs with 6 questions each and 2 RCs with 3 questions each. So this is more or less what has been followed in CAT as well as our mocks but there can always be a structure where you have 2 6 question RCs and 4 3 question RCs that's 6 passages in all or you have 4 6 question RCs that's just 4 passages. So there are multiple combinations possible like this, but this is the most common one. Of course, this does not mean as a rule that you will always get this combination. Let's now have a look at these RCs and see how they could have been attempted. Typically for RCs, we look at the overall subject matter and then think that whether this RC should have been attempted or not. We believe that apart from the subject matter, you should also look at the word length or the length of the passage and the number of questions associated with it so that it gives you a much better perspective on whether you should have attempted this particular RC or not. 
Now, when I look at this particular combination for this mock, I observe that the overall section LOD, as we said, was on the higher side at 2.12, of which clearly there are two standout RCs that are moderate to tough or purely tough. Also, when I look at their subject matter, one is on art forms, which is something which most students would anyways find difficult. And one is on a philosophical concept called utilitarianism, again which what most students would find difficult. Secondly, among these RCs, if you observe, one of them is significantly long at around 800 words where the typical cat length has now shrunk to anywhere between 400 to 600 words. So while the other passage was reasonably short or reasonably manageable in terms of its length, there were two negative points, that is its difficulty level and the subject matter. For the other RC, utilitarianism, its subject matter, its difficulty as well as its word length were all big negatives. One more important point here for these RCs was that both these RCs had only three questions. So the amount of effort that you would have had to put in versus the return that you would have got would be really minimal. Because total there were six questions for which you would have had to read two dense RCs attempt tough questions and you might still not have been able to attempt or get even more than two questions right. So in that sense, both these RCs were not worth attempting at all. Let's now look at all the six question RCs. So if we see among these three, the shortest RC was the fourth one at around 650 words. So yes, while it was slightly longer than what we've come to expect, it was still well within range. The good part, as we said, that it was it had six questions. Now, compared to the other topics here, you can clearly observe that this was a much more readable topic on geography. So, it spoke about the Balkan Peninsula in Europe, which was again much more readable compared to say capitalism or science and philosophy. Also, as we can see, the questions, and this is something that you would come to know only on a post facto basis, but as we can see, the questions here were also easy or easy to model, with hardly one question being modeled. So here, when I consider this RST, it ticks most of the boxes in terms of the attempts. Max maximum questions, so more possible attempts. Short passage, reasonably short compared to the other passages. Very easy questions. And if I look at all these topics, the most readable passage. So this is definitely one passage that I would try and maximize my attempts in. On the other hand, when I look at the other two RCs, structure of capitalism and science and philosophy, both these topics are reasonably dense. And both of them were reasonably longish passages as well. Also, another aspect here was that both had moderate questions, moderate passages. So they were both the kind of passages which, which could be considered borderline cases. Again, the only good part here was that both had six questions each. So if strategically attempted, you could have tried one or two questions in both these passages and still attempted somewhere around three questions in one. So what I would have done as a student in this particular mock is that I would have tried to attempt all three six question RCs. Of which I would have tried and maximized my attempts in the RC on the Balkan Peninsula and then tried to attempt as many questions as I could on the other two six question RCs. Using this strategy, even if I were to be able to attempt somewhere around nine questions in the RC, it would still be a very decent performance.
Now please keep in mind that while we generally say that you need to try and attempt anywhere around 3 to 4 RCs or attempt 15 questions in RCs, it is for a standard mock or it is for a mock that has been rated on the standard difficulty. When a section is tougher, you can always clear the sectional cutoff with fewer attempts. So you need to calibrate your attempts looking at the difficulty of that particular section even in the actual exam. Having looked at the RCs, now let's have a look at the non-RC questions. So as you can see here, the overall difficulty was tough, though the breakup was the same, that's four jumbled sentences, three contextual odd man out questions and three para summaries. Now the para summaries here, not only were they MCQ as always, but they were also tough. That made, that made attempting them a very risky proposition because a lot of students anyways find para summary to be a tough area. Jumbled sentences were again tough. Whereas the contextual odd man out questions, which is a variation of jumbled sentences, were on the easier side. So here when I look at the number of good attempts, I would say that anywhere around two to three questions would also be a good performance for this area. Now what do I mean by two to three attempts for numerical entry? Because typically we tell students to try and attempt all the questions from the numerical entry or theta questions. Yes, why you should mark all of these questions when I cal when I consider these two to three questions. They are the questions where you need to be very sure that you mark the right answer. So these are the questions where you believe that your accuracy level is pretty high. So in that sense, when I look at the total number of attempts for this section, we would be fairly confident that even around 12 attempts where you are sure of your accuracy would be a very good performance for this section. Let's look at the next part of this analysis which shows you the LOD for each question from question 1 to 34. So here these blue bars indicate the MCQs while the orange bars indicate the numerical entry or theta questions. So as you can see very clearly two of the toughest RCs, utilitarianism and art forms, both on the tougher side. Whereas when I again look at the structure of capitalism, while officially the LOD is moderate, but here when I look at the placement of all the questions, two tough questions right at the beginning, then two moderate questions and then two easy questions. So this kind of an RC becomes very difficult to attempt because you might start off with these questions, struggle to answer them and then leave everything. So something like this, even if you are able to attempt one question out of these, it is still good enough. On the other hand, if you look at this passage on Balkan Peninsula, just one moderate question and that again is right at the very end. So here, this is something which is much easier to attempt compared to say capitalism. Contrast this with the RC on science and philosophy. So technically, while this is slightly tougher than the RC on capitalism, observe that only the first question is tough, then everything is uniformly moderate. So here again, the right selection of questions becomes very important. If I look at the numerical entry questions, Observe that all the jumbled sentences here are on the tougher side, followed by a tough para summary here, a moderate para summary here, and another tough para summary question. On the other hand, the contextual odd man out questions are all reasonably easy. So here the key really becomes to identify the easy to moderate questions and try and attempt them. So this helps you identify the right questions to attempt and then increase your attempt so as to clear the sectional cutoff. Let's have a look at one RC, let's say the one on Balkan Peninsula. We won't solve this RC but have a look at the overall passage and discuss the approach to some of these questions.
so this was the passage starting from this point the balkan peninsula which had been raised to a high level of security etc then the history of this entire passage is given so it's more a combination of history and geography and it is pretty descriptive in that sense so ends here now typically rc questions can be divided into three parts or three types factual which means that the data is directly given in the passage you just need to find the right answer purely inferential where you need to take the data from the passage and then arrive at your own conclusion or your assumptions or inference as is given in the first question correctly inferred and then semi factual question where you it is a mixture of the first two types so here when we look at the questions the first one is a direct inference which again will come only by serious reading of the passage according to the author which of the following is or are true so here you would definitely have to read the passage i look at each statement and keep saying a is true a is false etc and based on that you can start eliminating options which of the following so that's a factual question whereas the first is inferential which of the following statements would the author most definitely agree on again inferential because you would need to read the passage and decide that this statement falls in line with the argument of the author as per the passage which of the following can be correctly inferred again replica of the first question so it's an inference which of the following does not apply to slavs factual question because you would need to go back to the passage read data about the slavs and come back and eliminate options here which of the following statements would the author most likely agree upon so again very similar to the earlier question in this passage so all of them if you notice are each question though it is similar all of them are using different data points from the passage and then making you answer each question so here you will need at least two to three rounds of reading the passage typically what we tell students is to try and read the passage very quickly once to get a basic hang of the topic then go to the questions like this try and judge what the questions are demanding of you and then read the passage once again in much more greater detail so that you can answer the questions this way you can try and do as many passages as you can attempt in the exam and solve questions selectively on the whole if we were to summarize this section of the mock we can say it was a tough verbal section in a moderate to tough mock because of the nature of the rcs anywhere close to 12 attempts would be a good performance for this particular section in parts 2 and 3 of our analysis we will have a look at the dilr and pont sections respectively The analysis for all our previous mocks are available on our official YouTube channel given in the link here. You can subscribe to our channel by clicking on this link. Also to receive notifications every time a new video is put up, you can hit the bell button. Please feel free to put in your feedback, comments or questions on the thread below the video. Keep watching. Thank you and wish you all the very best.